So I went, you know, to go get dinner for the family, uh, went to a fried chicken establishment and, you know, got wanted to get a, a, a box or a bucket. Some places don't do the bucket, which sucks. This is a family meal, some sides, you know, it's not the healthiest thing, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So I'm in the drive through I pull up, I give the guy the money, I'm sitting there, and he's looking at me like, why won't I go away? I mean, my guy, you didn't give me the, the chicken yet. I'm sitting there like an idiot. Finally, he says, sir, please drive around the front to the parking lot. What's in the parking lot? So it turned out, I guess the chicken wasn't ready, so they had to bring it out to me, but there was like no assigned spaces or anything for for extended takeout. I'm sitting there, I'm in the parking lot, and I realized I haven't. there's no way for me to verify my order. You know, I'm sitting there hoping they're going to bring me the chicken. I don't know, they could have, uh, it could have been a scam, right? They got my money and they got the chicken. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at a very helpful way to speed up your uh, ESP phase during autopilot deployment by making sure certain applications steer clear until you're at the desktop. Well, no, they did bring the chicken out and they somehow knew it was me in the car. I guess I was the only uh, idiot sitting there waiting for his chicken with a confused and angry look on his face. But the yeah, chicken was pretty good. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. One conversation that doesn't get old is how do we speed up ESP uh, when we're deploying through autopilot? Let's go take a look at our enrollment status page settings. Enrollment status page, all users and devices. I only have the one, right? Um, if you have multiple, that's fine. I mean, honestly, I think one tends to speed things up. I don't know why, technically it shouldn't, but that's just the way it seems to me and the thousands of devices I've deployed. So let's take a look at the way we have this set up. Um, I'm doing the block device until all required apps. Uh, are installed if they're signed. You know we skip user ESP, so I highly recommend doing that and just you know locking this to device assigned apps. Okay, so you see I only have two apps here. But why is this a problem? If I'm only locking two apps in ESP and that's all it's waiting for, why should I have to worry about other applications coming down to the device? Well, that's a good question that we're gonna answer with a whiteboard. All right, so let's say this is your enrollment status page. I mean, it, it kind of looks like it. And let's say that you've specified two applications to wait for. So you have autopilot branding and company portal, just like me. So you have all these other applications that are supposed to get assigned to the device, but because of ESP, we're thinking, oh, well, it's only gonna let in company portal and autopilot branding because they're on the list and my additional apps like Office, Reader, Chrome, whatever you got up here, those are gonna get stopped. While this thinking makes sense, it's not necessarily true, right? The ESP will prioritize these, but if those apps are assigned to all devices, there's a good chance they're still gonna make it down to the device. So you can see here, even though we specified uh, only these two in ESP, Chrome and Reader still made it to the device, and maybe that's going to cause me a lot of issues because whatever, maybe there's a reboot, maybe it takes a long time. So what can we do to make sure that certain apps get blocked no matter what? So look at, luckily the answer is very simple, right? There's a script we can write and use it as a requirements rule for applications. And we can just make one script and apply it to as many as we want. And it's going to basically tell the app, hey, are we in the out-of-box experience? And if we are, we're not installing right now. And it'll just try again later. All right, so we're gonna create a new script. It's a very simple script. So we're gonna call this is ubi.ps1, right? Um, all right, let's go ahead and open that up with VS Code. I'm sure it'll ask me if I wanna update and a bunch of other questions. Oh no, no questions today. Oh, lucky me. All right, so it's actually cool. It's actually a uh, C-sharp um, call that we're gonna make that we're gonna wrap in PowerShell. So it's a definition. So we're gonna say definition equals 
And of course, that's just going to be our string right there. So using system, using system text, and I'll have this available because you might not feel like going through and doing C sharp. That's absolutely fine. We're not going to be doing a ton of C sharp now, so don't get scared. This is just something very specific for this guy right here. Um, interrupt services. Although Hyperpilot was written in C sharp, so I'm getting kind of comfortable with it. Looks looks familiar. Trust me, if I can learn it, you can learn it. You can learn anything. Uh, namespace API. Public class kernel 32. Oh, what I do? This should be there. Kind of sucks doing this within here because everything comes out weird. Uh, DLL import kernel 32 DLL char set char set auto set last error equals true. Public static external in UB complete so it'll see if it's complete or not if it be is UB complete it's actually a lowercase okay cool um, and we have that to close it off all right good that's the uh, that's the end of the C sharp part. So we're going to add type definition, definition, and the language is C sharp. So we're telling it we're adding it to the PowerShell. So we're going to call that is UB complete, and it'll be false by default. And then what we do is we say uh, app requirement equals and we're gonna run that. Curl 32. Ubi complete. Ref is Ubi complete. And then we'll return that. So this is basically gonna return a one or a zero. It's gonna return a one if it's complete or a zero otherwise. So it's a true or false. It's a Boolean, which is nice. So the way this works, uh, you could just save that and let's go try it out. So let's go to, all right, let's use Google Chrome. I'm actually going to change this to all devices, add all devices. And what we're going to do is under the requirements, we're going to add a script. And that script is going to be is UB complete. And we're just gonna select what we just created. There it is. So we're gonna leave everything on default. Uh, we want this to be a Boolean equals, okay? And we're gonna make that yes. So basically what we're saying is it's set to all devices, but in order to install, you have to be true. Meaning uh, is UB complete has to be a one, a yes. Now, this isn't a blanket rule to say every app that you don't want in ESP, you have to apply this script to. I mean, it's one script and you can keep using it over and over again, but that doesn't mean it's necessary. I would say it's going to depend on your situation, right? If consistently ESP is doing a good job keeping certain things out or prioritizing the things you want, that's great. Leave it alone. Um, if you run into what I've run into and other folks where, well, I'm only locking one or two apps, but these other ones seem to come down, that's a good opportunity for you to say, hey, listen, you're not supposed to ha you're not supposed to be here before Ubi. Let me add this script to take an extra precaution. So um, below is uh, I'm going to put a link to the script in my GitHub. So you can definitely check that out. Uh, if you have other questions, hop in the discord and let me know and we'll be seeing you.